What's up guys, Matt here coming at you with the brand new Fury Tech Cayman Pro SZK. As you can see, this one's a little bit different looking with this hard body, but it brings a very nice look to this very decked out comp style truck underneath. So we're gonna dive into this one, check out some of the components underneath, and then we're gonna get into the running. All right, so coming in at 389 bucks, there's a lot going on here we wanna talk about real quick before we run this. A lot of people seen this and was like, no way, you know, the price tag is too much. But uh, if you look at this like a custom build, basically that you're buying out of the box, you're actually getting a lot of value. I just built this and I've probably got five, 600 bucks in it easily. So the fact that this is coming in at 389, it's pretty sweet, okay? Whether you like the body or not, it can easily be changed. I do like the touch they did here. We all know what this kind of reminds us of. We've got some nice headlights in there we'll talk about in a minute. But underneath this body is really what I want to talk about. You've got the aluminum axles here with the brass already on them in the front. So brass inner and outer that you don't have to buy. So very nice that we've already got the brass, the aluminum axles, all metal gears inside of all of this. Okay, transmission, axles, everything, metal drive shafts. We've got a 7.5 degree angle on our skid, which is giving us this huge breakover right here, which is what we're kind of going for with custom builds. You know, I just built that, like I said, and it, that's what I was really trying to get some breakover there. And I'm gonna do a video on that custom build as well, but uh, I just wanted to kind of compare it a little bit. Now, one thing I'm gonna change real quick is just the angle of this rear axle. You can see that drive shaft hanging way down. Pure take said they've already addressed that i mentioned it to them they was like yeah the production models won't be like that so um, that should be fixed with any of these that ship we've got the lizard pro all-in-one which is a 30 to 50 amp esc here with the mini komodo motor so uh, and then it's attached to the mini stellar transmission very smooth very nice setup not gonna have to worry about stripping any gears, anything like that in here. So very strong system, two to three S capable. And then we've got these nice big bore style oil filled shocks attached to this thing. These have been really good shocks. It's what we're getting on a lot of these trucks, same ones on this Evo Pro. I haven't had any of these really leak on me. This one, these seem a little bit stiff to me. I don't know if it's the oil in them, the angle, or just the spring rate or what, but it takes a lot of force to kind of compress that rear end. You just need to drop a little bit of oil out of there. A lot of times I just run a couple drops of oil in there enough to keep these things lubed up. These trucks are not heavy enough to need full on oil filled shocks, but it is nice that they don't bounce and bobble around like they used to. So that's something we can play with. Everybody's gonna go their own way with like shock oil and that sort of thing. So a uh, very nice touch with this mag mount setup here it's on the hinge system in the rear i don't like to rely just on magnets because the body just kind of pops off a lot of times but these are very strong magnets you can see it's not coming off it's not moving like you're going to break this truck or body before that comes off so very strong magnets um mine did need just a dab of glue uh, it's cold and all of that stuff so by the time this shipped to me I think this glue had been warm, cold, warm, cold, kind of came loose after a couple pulls on this. So I just put a little E6000. It works great, it's holding it very well. We've got a nice touch with the lights. We'll check those out in a minute. The only thing I would say possibly to do on this is there's a few of these sort of nuts here that go on the, end, the back side of the screws that aren't lock nuts. So you may want to, I put a, just a little dab of tire glue a lot of times on them just to keep those from coming loose. I did have one of them come loose on me. It's nice when we get the lock nuts so we don't have to worry about that, but there's not a lot of them. It's mostly on the links here. So that's something you may want to do. These right here, hopefully you can see that well enough. Just put a little bit of CA glue at the end of that. Usually it'll help hold them on there. Besides that, I need to roll this axle up and then we'll go run this. But let's power it up so we can check out the transmitter and the lights and uh, then we'll run it. 
All right, so we're powered up. I am powering this with the Galaxy 3S 180 pack. These have been really good for me. I was running Palm Beach bots for a long time, and I had a lot of really good luck with these until like the last batch or two that I got wasn't great, and I heard a lot of people saying they were having issues, and Palm Beach bots was not working with them. They were getting them out of the pack, and they didn't work, and they were saying we were using them for crawlers and wasn't charging them right and all that. So um, I went to the Galaxies, and these have been great. I haven't had one of these die yet, but you know how that goes. They, they could be good for six months, and then they just start stinking. So um, very nice touch with these lights right here, though. Look at this. I wanted to power this up and show you guys. So you turn it off or switch the mode. You go all the way to the left, to the right. It changes all the way to the left, all the way back to the right. That's off. We've got just headlights. We've got just those. I think that is sweet right there. That is so sick. I love these lights. Look at that. Freetech did a great job with these lights. I'm going with that because I love it. So that definitely helps the looks and appearance of this thing to me. I wasn't huge on the body when I seen the pictures, but in person with the lights and everything, it works well. So you can see the slow crawl, really good. The thing about this is for the price, you pull it out of the box, you're good to go. You know, I've spent days trying to get this to run right. Um, just with the very stubby short front drive shaft, I've got to get a metal one, cut it down that will work on there. Lots of uh, issues and trying to make things work and figuring out links and all of that. This, take it out of the box and go, you know, so... A lot of people really want that, and it's cool that FuryTech's offering us something so custom and capable that we can do that with. So let's check out um, our incline, then we're going to test sort of the steering angle because I think we can get more steering out of this with a little bit of modding, okay? So we're not bottoming out the steering link on the axle housing, as you can see there, like we do a lot of times right at this corner can't hold it and show you but you can see how much space we've got in there i think what is hitting is the inner portal cover right here is just bottoming out on this knuckle the c hub here so if you watch that area when i go here see that that's where we're stopping so maybe if we slit that grind that nut that down just a little bit Probably not going to grind the aluminum, but maybe that brass cover a little bit, notch it. We can get a couple more millimeter out of that, which is going to give us a few more degrees steering, and every little bit helps. So that's something we may want to do, just because we're not getting full steering out of that. My dual rate is all the way up, but that's where it's bottoming out. So um, that's something we may do eventually, but for now, we just want to run it like it is out of the box, and maybe we'll compare this the um, turning radius with like the evo pro here and then the incline of both as well so um let's check it out i'm going to throw the stock tires back on this and we'll kind of compare them a bit all right so i did rubber band the front shocks just because that's something i do a lot and the evo is banded as well so i kind of wanted to just make it fair that does help this test right here tremendously And that is 57.7, somewhere in there, 57 and a half. We did that pretty easily. So let's go to 58.3 there. I don't think we're going to get that. So I would say right around the 57 and a half to 58 possibly is the max of this thing. You can see I, I'm just not really going to get that, I don't think. So um, pretty dang good for straight out of the box. All right, so just by removing this body, which weighed 51 grams with it, the lights, the magnets, everything just like it is here. We're gaining quite a bit. I'm at 58.8 right there. And 
and it's pulling that. I'm just kind of losing traction. I had to hit it just right, really. This ramp needs to be a little bit wider. All these trucks just keep getting wider. <laughs> but it does climb this. Yeah, so um, just by going with like a Lexan body and some heavier wheels or something, you could probably be pushing the 60 mark. So this thing is set up pretty well. So we're still at the 56.7. The torque twist is killer on this thing. So you'll see right there, boom, as soon as it starts to go up that, that torque twist just loops it out bad. This truck could do much more if it wasn't for that. Watch that left front. I think it will get that. But it could definitely do much more if it wasn't for that torque twist. So the Fury Tech definitely wins there. 55. You can see the torque twist on that is insane. See how much that driver front's lifting? This could definitely get more if it wasn't for that. <laughs> crazy um you don't realize how bad that is until you drive something else this truck is very good though uh, we don't have any brass or anything added but that's what i'm talking about when you're you're gonna go throwing more money at everything um this is something that you can kind of take out of the box that's pretty well built uh, that's why it is pulling this all right so i'm just gonna start up against this board i'm backed up against it all the way to one side i just got that box there helping hold this board so it don't move at all we're gonna turn this all the way left. It is maxed out. And then we're just gonna see how far it takes to turn this thing. These are basically the same axles between these two trucks. I feel like just the brass cover on the Fury Tech may be limiting our steering a little bit. So let's pull this up here. We are backed up. We we're against the edge. Yep, double checked. We we're where we need to be. Turn this full left. Just a little bit tighter turning radius. So we're gonna be basically a truck difference there. If you look, we go ahead and finish this. We are on to the board. So almost a truck width difference. I feel like that brass cover is just limiting us a little bit on the Fury Tech. So if we kind of grind that down or notch it out, we'll get that full turning because these are basically the same axles. These are just upgraded on the Fury Tech. So you can see right away, I had to put the lights on beast mode. I love the lights on this truck and found myself enjoying the body more than I really expected to. Um, when I first seen it, I thought, what is that? You know, like I didn't really like it much, but um, getting it in hand, I do like it more. I love the front end part of it. My, my main issue is just kind of the rear. Coming down this, you can see it gets pretty steep right there when your driver front drops in that hole. This is where having the suspension tweaked a little bit would keep that rear more planted. It's just kind of raising as the front drops, the rear comes up. So um, I made this, but I did struggle with it a few times, trying to get down it and looped out quite a few times before I was able to get it. The truck is balanced out well. I put it on the scale and it was very close to the 60-40, 50-50 on each side. So... Um, it's not really an issue of it being too light in the rear or anything. It does have the brass outer portal covers on the rear. It's balanced out well. It just needs a little work on the shocks, I think. Here, the tires, they seem okay. Like, they're really pretty good for RTR tires. But they're just something we're going to change. In my opinion, I'm going to toss these wheels and tires in the bin and throw some better tires on them. I think I would get better performance with just some different tires. Um... That's just kind of a thing with RTRs. Right there, you can see the front of the skid wants to hang up at times. The rear has a really good breakover, but that front sometimes digs in. I'll talk about that a little later. In my final thoughts, 
um, because I do kind of point a few things out that I think need to be tweaked. But um, overall, I enjoyed running the truck. I just had a few little issues here and there. So hopefully you guys can see this, but while running, I noticed that this wheel would just kind of catch every now and then. And if you watch right in here, you'll see a little bit of a bend in that shaft. And it's causing this thing to just kind of snag a little bit every now and then. See right there? So it's a little more noticeable at slower speeds, I guess. Right there. So I increase the speed a little bit. You can see it just stop every now and then right there. So I thought I had something binding and I was checking everything. Everything's free. I mean, it's all very loose. Uh, but that shaft is what's causing it. So there you can see a little issue I'm having with one of the axles up front. These um, Hobby Plus axles have been pretty good for me overall. They're solid. They're just a little limited on gearing because there's nothing available for them. And the steering's a little limited, so um, maybe not what I would choose for a custom build, but pretty good solid axles. This is the first one that I've had any kind of issue like that with, so I think that's kind of like a freak accident thing. I don't know. I didn't really put it in any crazy bind that I noticed that should have caused that. I just all of a sudden noticed that wheel doing something weird, so um, I don't know. Maybe that's a fluke. But the only other thing with this truck is it takes a little getting used to the throttle. It's very Cayman-like. If you've drove a Cayman, you know what I'm talking about. It's touchy. It's got tons of power. And you'll see right here, sometimes you get in a spot and you're just in a little bit of a tough spot. And you're trying to work your way out and then boom, you're just gone. <laughs> like it's a little unpredictable because you hit that power and it's just like launches, which is very nice for a lot of the stuff that i normally try to do the way i normally drive i'm pretty wild usually so i kind of like that but if you don't like that um just know this truck is geared that way and it is crazy sometimes so maybe dropping down to a 2s would tame it down you know i've gotten used to running everything on 3s because i just want more wheel speed more wheel speed um, especially with scx axles and worm gears but this truck i think we could easily run a 2s and be fine now here you'll see sometimes it just felt like I had trouble holding a line. I think it's a mix of the tires on this kind of slick rock. It's dusty, slick, that sort of thing. But um, I would just notice sometimes I try to launch up stuff like that and I just lose my line. And I think most of that can be helped with the tires. But um, it, it is just kind of slick rock and it, that happens a lot on this course. Here you can see the approach angle is pretty good. I'm pretty much coming straight onto that. And then all of the clearance into the rear. Look at that. I mean, if you can get your front on it and your skid up over it, you're going to get on it most of the time. You can see there the, the break over in the rear really helped me just kind of walk up onto that. Just had to get the right traction with the tires. Now, this line right here, it doesn't look like anything. I mean, a lot of this stuff doesn't on video, but it is slick. It's very hard to get across this, and this truck does a good job. Um, it's just steep enough that a lot of times they want to roll and then if you don't hang that right tire up top, you're definitely going to just slide like a started sliding right there, but that's usually where stuff tips out. And this truck did a good job holding its line. Right here, I think if I had the suspension tuned a little bit, I would have been able to come down that very easily. The truck just kind of dumps out, you know, instead of dropping into a hole with one tire and kind of holding its line, it just flips over. So um, once we get the shocks tuned, 
a little softer i think we'll be fine there but um, again this is another like slick spot you come out of the dirt at the bottom there's nowhere to get good traction like the dirt is so loose on my course you're just always spinning but uh it's able to make it up but right here you'll see the front of the skid hanging up that's what i'm talking about if you don't hit something with just enough speed to get over it you're not really going to get over it it just kind of digs in and then there's the suspension again i should have been able to kind of drop that tire into that hole and the truck hold its line but since it's just kind of like it's on a pivot ball in the center of the truck it just kind of when the front goes down the rear comes up and it just looped the truck completely out but with a little suspension tuning on this thing uh i think it's going to be really good you know the torque twist is way down from what we're getting with the um, evo pro i think we've got a different body option coming for this as well so very excited to see that uh, because this is kind of a love or hate body you know for a lot of people like I said, I, when I first seen it, I thought it was the ugliest thing on earth. <laughs> I'm just being honest, but it, it kind of grew on me some, you know, I don't mind running it, but it's maybe not what I would choose to run, you know, but I don't mind running it. The clearance on it's great. Um, you can get the tires into the fenders a little bit if you're at full turn and the suspension's pinned, but like it was never an issue while running and you don't hear the Lexan body like you're dragging and catching on everything when you're going through you know rough sections so um the body works fine i like the the hinge system and the magnet mounts are great so um i don't really have a problem with it it's just hit or miss whether you like it or you don't So here's one of the spots on my course where you need some pretty good wheel speed you know my course is pretty simple it's not that hard in most places but it is slick that pipe is slick that gravel doesn't give much traction so it's it's hard to get up this a lot of scx 24 builds struggle getting up that at times unless they're just running you know crazy big tires and and i can get the wheel speed with them but you can see there this thing just snaps right up that and that's why i like having that added wheel speed um, it's not needed a ton indoors but especially when you go outside uh, it's very nice to have that poppiness. So uh, I like the wheel speed that this thing carries for sure. So you see on a couple of these outdoor lines here, it handles itself very well on these inclines. Look at that, it stays very well planted. I think the body does hard it a little bit on straight inclines. This right here, the shocks are not banded. I was just running it completely stock. And then on this climb, it seems like the, it almost seems like the rear engages first sometimes or something like it. It wanted to just really, pop a willy going up this a lot maybe it's the weight of the body uh i don't know but i feel like it can make this and it did make it um some overdrive in the front would definitely help that and maybe going ahead and banding the shocks because i like i said they weren't banded here at all um, but it did very well outdoors i just kind of limited my time outdoors because it's been crazy cold and that's what the 24s are for um when it's nasty cold i can run indoors <laughs> so uh overall i was very impressed with how i did on the course out here i just hit a couple of the key climbs but it did very very well all right so my final thoughts on this thing is it's a very good rtr probably the best rtr we've seen it's an improvement over the cayman it's an improvement over the fury wagon it's obviously better than like this, depending how much money you want to spend, okay? Under 200 bucks, this thing is great. It's going to need a few things. It's brushed. If you want to go brushless, you know, you can step into this range. Um, my only issue with it is 
getting these kind of fully built RTRs, it's kind of going to come down to a matter of is all of these components on here what you really want in your build? Or do you want to spend a little bit more maybe and build something custom? So it really kind of depends what type of person you are. If you want to get it out of the box and then have pretty much everything on it, but maybe need a little bit of tweaking and tuning and possibly a couple things changed, I would probably change the servo. It's a solid servo. It's fine. Probably a little better than like an Emacs or something, but I'm kind of a servo snob. I'm going to change this. If I'm running this truck a lot, that's just me being honest. Uh, and then we're going to change wheels and tires most of the time. So it kind of depends what you like to do. If you just want to get that this thing and change those few kind of parts and tune the shocks and stuff, it's great. If you're the type that wants to go with the cheapest solid truck and build your way up, you can start somewhere like this or wherever you want. Or maybe you just want to, you like to build from scratch. You know, the good thing is we have all of these options and, um, you know, we just keep getting more and more and better and better stuff offered to us. This chassis, much better than I think really anything we've seen from Fury Tech. Uh, the angle on the skid works great. We've got tons of mounting options, shocks, upper links, everything. The only issue I really had was it just kind of seemed like this skid right here was a hang up point if you really don't kind of launch and get over things. If you get hung here, you're stuck. It's just kind of a sharp angle there that likes to get hung up. Whereas like this, you can see it's kind of a, just flows into the skid and then off. It's very, very good. It stays much more planted. There's not any of the torque twists like we have in this thing. So that's very good. You've got the aluminum axle housings with all of the brass. Everything is already here. Like I said, for me, basically, I would maybe change the servo at some point. This one's going to last you a good while, I would think. And then we're all going to change wheels and tires. So that's one of the main issues I think companies run into offering things like this. It's just, is it going to be exactly what anybody wants? Probably not. You know, I could build my most capable truck, the best absolute components that I can think of, sell 10 of them to 10 different people, ship them, they get them, they're going to change something on them. It's just not, there's no one RTR that's going to fit everybody. But this is a very good, solid place to start with a lot of really good components that I feel like you're getting much cheaper. So in the end, I was very surprised at how well this did. I mean, I thought it would do good, but it, it actually did really, really good. Um, I think some different tires will make it even better and then i just really want to get some more steering out of these axles so that's kind of what i'm looking for out of it you know after driving these axles it's very hard to drive anything else <laughs> crazy steering on those so i need a little more out of these um i think if you had just like a lexan body or something a little lighter on this it would do even better so um the performance is there just needs a little tweaking and tuning. The shocks, like I mentioned, I think they need to be adjusted. You can see I took the bands off just to kind of see how it would do. And even with the bands off, you know, it still don't flex real well. You can see there, this thing, I can pretty much sit on the hood of this. And it, it's fine. So, um, it just needs to be softened up a, a bit. It felt like it just kind of rocked back and forth like this, and the suspension didn't really work a lot. Uh, so maybe we'll work on that. But overall, a very good offering from Fury Tech. You'll see I did switch out the ESC, actually. This Lizard integration system was in here. I liked that it was a little bit smaller than the Python. So I actually switched them, and I put the Lizard on here, it just fit this slider better. I put the Python in here. But the fact that you get an ESC and motor brushless setup and everything that you can use is great. 
you know, and like I said, the servo gets it done, but for me, I'm just a little picky on servos, so um, I would probably change it at some point. We need a little overdrive in the front. At times, it kind of felt like the rear almost engaged first. It was kind of weird, um, but besides that, like, it, it's very, very solid. I like these links. These are very, very clean. No rod ends to snag or hang up. The angle on the skid works and gives you just a really good amount of clearance back here. I could actually roll that axle up a little bit more probably and get just a little more clearance. So you can see there, we've got tons of clearance. Uh, it all just works really well. And it, I think it's gonna be solid. You know, it's all metal gears. It's basically bulletproof with the metal drive shafts, all metal gears. And there's no guesswork of trying to figure it all out. You know, I've been building on this for a good while and running it a little bit and I don't like things and I change it and run it again and I don't like it and I change it and like it's still not really where I want it. So that's just part of it, you know. None of these things are really take them out of the box and have the perfect truck, <laughs> you know. Uh, so just know that maybe when you get it, you may have to tweak a few things to your liking, you know. It just depends how the shocks are sitting compared to what you like, whatever. Um, there is no perfect RTR, but these things just keep getting better and better. And I like that Fury Tech is offering us the best they can. So very good truck. You guys let me know what you think about it. Let me know if you're the type that wants to buy something like this that pretty much has everything and then tweak it a little, or if you like to start from scratch, or if you like to start with just kind of a base build and then work your way up a little bit at a time. So I appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click the bell. A lot of stuff coming, so stay tuned. Peace.